name is Dusty Lynn and I'm the Pediatric Educator at the Life Support Learning Center. Today we're going to talk about the Zoll-R series and its use in the neonatal ICU. So let's briefly overview the Zoll-R series. There's basically one device that is configured in two different ways and the configuration really has to do with the energy default. You'll notice that there's two different colors you see red and you see blue and three different names on the tags. Notice that the two red both default to one joule energy selection. You'll find these in the OR and of course in the neonatal ICU in the pediatric ICU. The standard configuration you'll find in other units that have the Zoll R series. So when using the Zoll R series in the neonatal ICU, you will have a choice between two pads for most infants. The one-step pediatric CPR pads, you can use up to 25 kilos. So this will work for any infant in the neonatal ICU. However, we also have a smaller pad, the Pad Pro Mini Infant Pad, but these can only be used in infants who are less than three kilos. So for your tiny babies, you can use these. They take up much less room on the chest. But again, you can use the one step for any infant in the neonatal ICU, and the Pad Pro Mini Infant can only be used for babies less than three kilos. So now we're going to go over the placement of the Pad Pro Mini Infant pads. You can use these for defibrillation, pacing, or cardioversion. But remember, you can only use these for infants who weigh less than three kilos. Once you open the packet and you take the pads out, they will tell you exactly where to place them. Removing one at a time as to not get them to stick together. Place it well Flip the child over, the infant over, and then place them on their back. You will now connect them to the therapy cable as such. So this is the view of the mini infant pad placement with your ECG electrodes on as well. This is the frontal view. And this is the back view of the mini infant pad placement. So now let's go over the use of the one-step pediatric CPR pads in the neonatal ICU. Get your package and open it as indicated by the arrow. The picture will show you exactly where the pad goes on the patient. Take off one at a time. First, we're going to place the anterior pads. Notice the CPR disc shows you exactly where you're going to be doing CPR. If this is too large for your infant, you can take this off and remove it. And now you have your anterior pad. So now, let's place the posterior pad. Again, the picture shows you exactly where it goes. So you roll your infant, place it on the back,
and now you place your therapy pads into the therapy cable as such. And this is the anterior view of the one-step pediatric CPR pads used with the Zoll R series. And this is the posterior placement of the one-step pediatric CPR pads. So for the DFib mode, turn your Zoll R series to DFib. You'll have your pads and leads on your patient. And notice again with the NICU PICU configuration, it's going to default to one joule. So always make sure you're in the right mode and at the right joules. If this baby were five kilos, we're going to go with two joules per kilo, so we're going to increase that to 10. So we come over to energy select and we're going to go up to 10. So we're in the right mode, we're at the right joules, and we're going to push charge. And this is the point where we're looking at our patient, shocking on three, one, two, three, keep our eyes on the patient, no one should be touching the patient, and we're going to press shock. And that's the defib mode. So now let's cover synchronized cardioversion in the neonatal ICU. You might use it for SVT. You might use it for ventricular tachycardia with a pulse. To use it in sync mode, you have the pads and the leads on the patient. Notice on the Zoll, you will see no indication of sync. To get the sync mode option, you have to actually turn it to defib. When you turn it to defib, notice that the sync option now is available. Turn it to defib, you'll see sync, and now you need to press to put it in the sync mode. You will know you're in the sync mode because it will say sync here, and you will see the waveform highlighted. You must make sure that this is an R wave. Sometimes it's difficult to tell, so you might need to change the size. The default is 1, and I'm going to press this size button until I get to a visual that I can ensure that I'm on the R wave. And here I can clearly see that I'm on the R wave. So again, I'm in the right mode. I want to be on the right joules. When you're using synchronized cardioversion, you start off at 0.5 to 1 joules per kilo. And if this is a 5 kilo baby, if I want to start at a half a joule per kilo, I need to come to energy select and turn this up to two and a half. But notice it doesn't go up to two and a half. So let's just choose three. I'm in the right mode. I'm at the right joules. And as indicated here, I can see that I'm on the right waveform, the R wave. So now I'm going to charge. My eyes are on my patient Though I'm ready to push the shock button, I'm looking to make sure no one's touching the patient, and I'm going to count down, shocking on three, one, two, three. And I push the button that says shock until it discharges. Notice now we are in defib mode. Very, very important to always check to make sure you're in the right mode, the right joules, and in the case of synchronized cardioversion, on the right waveform. So let's put this back into sync in case we're going to need it again. We're in the right mode. If we're going to increase, we'll go up to one joule per kilo, which would make that five. And we are on the right waveform. So now we're ready to use this again in the synchronized cardioversion mode.
So now we will review pacing in the neonatal ICU with the Zoll-R series. Your patient has to have his pads as well as his three-lead ECG cable on in order to pace. Turn the Zoll on to pacer. And you will notice this child in third degree heart block, as you turn the pacer on, you see the pacing spikes here but there's no response, so you know he's not pacing yet. The default is at 70 pace beats per minute. Let's go ahead and turn that up to 100, unless otherwise directed to do so. So we're at 100 pace beats per minute. Again, no milliamps yet until we turn it up. So now we're going to increase our output until we have good capture good capture, you will notice by a pacing spike and a ventricular response behind each one. Notice that when you're using the Zoll R series to pace, you are externally ventricularly pacing. So you'll see a pacing spike and a QRS response. A pacing spike, ventricular response. And that is good visual capture or good electrical capture. The most important thing now, of course, is to see if you have good mechanical capture. You would do this by checking the pulses of your patient. You'll also notice that your arterial waveform should now be indicative of the rate that you have your pacing set at. Other indications would be increased patient perfusion. You can also print out a slip so that you can see you have good capture. And notice here, you see your pacing spike response, pacing spike response for each pacing spike that you see, you have a good ventricular response. That coupled with patient improvement shows that you have adequate pacing. If you need to change the rate, you can do so at any time. So again, in review, for pacing with the Zoll R series, they need the pad and the leads. You turn it to pace, turn your rate to where you want it, and increase your output until you have good electrical capture and once you do you check for good mechanical capture and improvement of patient condition.